The road is Route 6, and uh, we're going down to Huntington, Utah, to have some work done on our RV. The winter time is not necessarily the best time to take this route. We're going to visit Continuous Resources, which are a small company, but one that's doing some really good work in solar installations. And uh, we are going in the middle of winter because we're not quite sure how long it's going to take them to get this done. And uh, we wanted to make sure that we had plenty of time to do it. Um, we're going to be seeing Matt and we're going to hopefully end up with a very nice installation. We'll see. We found continuous resources uh, through Battleborn, and uh, they're the suppliers of our battery as well as the components, uh, Victron components that we're using uh, to help this conversion uh, forward. And they highly recommended uh, continuous resources. And after doing some research, I thought, well, you know, they're probably one of the better people you're going to find anywhere around Utah without having to go down to Arizona, which is a bit of a ways to go from here. So the distance to Huntington from where we're from, which is the Salt Lake area, is only two and a half hours. And uh, actually it's a very nice drive going down Route 6. It certainly is very pretty. We're using Vitron components because uh, it's a system that was originally developed for maritime use and consequently it's very very durable and not bulletproof but it's close to it and uh, bouncing around on the highway and the different kinds of weather patterns and temperatures that you have in an RV uh, we wanted something that was going to be far more error-free than some other systems we've we've had Renogy in the past but uh, this is a much more supple and capable set of systems um, and we hopefully are going to have nothing but really good luck we ha currently have a 200 amp hour coach battery system uh, lithium and we're moving that up to 600 amp hours so it'd be six uh, 100 amp uh, Battleborn batteries. We have 375 watts of uh, solar panels on the roof currently and we're going to expand that to 1,175 watts. Uh, over time we have felt that we've got our uh, uh, requirements very well laid out and so this should be more than adequate. We're also going to put in a DC to DC inverter system going from the main engine alternator to the coach batteries and it will also be able to backflow from the coach batteries to the uh, main battery, the coach, uh, the uh, engine's battery to keep that topped off and we're not actually going anywhere. So we're very, very excited about having those additional capabilities. Rolling into Huntington, uh, it's the picture of a one light small town in Utah. Uh, Main Street is the Main Street. It's near uh, the San Rafael Swell, uh, and there's a state park right outside on the border of, of Huntington. So if you want to take the night, uh, you can go chill there and uh, have a nice time. It's actually a very nice reservoir. Follow Main Street through town and on the south end of Huntington, you'll come to East 500 and you want to take a left down to that. It's a nice little gravel road uh, when you get down towards uh, around the next bend, you'll be taking another left onto South 400 
and continuous resources will be on the right. Now you've arrived at Continuous Resources. It's a little out of the way, but it's worth getting here. I bet there is a bit up there. Do we need a shovel, Marcus? <laughs> Must be better insulated than I thought. This is our lithium capable 40 watt Renogy solar collector and uh, it's right where the wires are from Integra. And that's where our batteries currently are in the battery compartment. We're going to use the space underneath the queen size bed for our new batteries as it is currently unused and not on a slide making it for a more stable installation platform. The current wiring system is not all that elegant and uh, consequently we're going to uh, pretty much redo all of this with the new installation, making it a far more secure uh, wiring system as well as a lot more efficient and uh, it'll look better too. This is our current uh, uh, solar panels in their current configuration and we're not going to actually move those we're going to keep them there um, we want to be able to go from this to adding four more panels and uh, with the additional uh, panels that'll bring us up to 1175 So let's see what the new system is actually going to look like yeah. and uh, how does it operate? Well, you got, you got room in here now. Yeah. Version, hopefully. Oh, I see where you're going. Cool. It worked out really well. You're coming up right underneath it, right where you need to be. All right. This first should be a little, a little better. You might have to leave it a few more times. But... <laughs> Boy, that was a... A little stiff? Uh, a little bit of a bear to get open, yeah. Yeah, I so, know. That's the new, right here is the new alternator charging component. The thing about motorhomes is there's about 8.6 billion wires. Yes, there are. Um, so that's, that's always a treat. That's why I thought where we were going to put it all would work pretty well. Nice job of sealing it. No, yeah, it worked out good. Yeah, yeah. The tricky part is, is some black wires are positive, some red wires are negative. <laughs> So, in there? Yeah. Because that's what they like to do. Yeah, that's what I was... Nice. So we charged it up to 100 in the shop and then just kind of let things sit over the weekend. Then we pulled it out this morning, which honestly just probably an hour ago, we actually started getting some sunshine. Yeah. So. Yeah, okay. How do they differentiate? In terms of, what do you mean? It doesn't make any difference, they're just both outputting. 
Mm -hmm. or inputting. Yeah, typically number two is going to be the lower <coughs> of the two because it has the, the older panels on it. Cool, um, okay. Number one's got the newer panels. I get it. So, but Yeah, most of the time this is going to be, that's going to be the screen right there that you're going to pay the most attention to. All right. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of hard to... We were trying to find ways to remove this and just... This wouldn't happen. Well, I couldn't find a comfortable <laughs> way to do it. Oh, I can see. I can um, see. Probably you've got a three and a three? Yeah, or, three, yeah. Or two and two. Oh, nope, this should be... There should be six. Yep, this should be six total. So three so and three. Two, two, and then two over there. Is that how you did it? It looks like two, two, and two. Wow. Cool. Yeah, so that was... Oh, that like oh, that. Pairs? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, they're two connected. Nice. Wow. So what maintenance do I have to do or none? Not really. Good to uh because it's in a Is there a, did you are there a hole somewhere where there's a vent right here. There's a vent right there. Yeah, yeah. which has got kind of the stock, you can see it here in a second, is the Oh, very stock looking cover yeah um so it doesn't stick out like a sore thumb um in terms of maintenance uh just charge up the batteries we recommend in trailers rvs motorhomes things like that good to check the connections every once in a while mm -hmm. of this, what uh, <laughs> just anything yeah okay and this yeah. is this is a mobile earthquake yes you know? it is so obviously things are torqued down as they should be um, but when you got something that's almost constantly moving and vibrating, sure, just just a good habit to. So what's what here? What, so what are all these? Let's start from left to right. Here. Okay. So these are the charge controllers. Okay. Um, so there's going to be one for the old panels, one for the newer panels. Mm -hmm. Okay. This is what's called the Servo GX. Think of that as kind of like the communication hub. Okay. We'll get to that in a second. This is the main cutoff switch for the inverter. Okay. Okay, so this is the inverter providing actual AC to outlets and okay. things like that. Um, so that's the main cutoff switch now. Mm -hmm, for Yeah, for this. Um, this is kind of a backup charger. Okay. okay. And I'll explain that in a little bit. Um, we've got breaker boxes for... This breaker box has got uh, a few things in it. Two breakers are for the in, this MPPT right there. Mm -hmm. The other two breakers are for the AC in and the AC out of this. Okay. Just to keep circuits protected. Okay. Um, I realize there is already protection in the main panel and shore power and things like that, but just to be just to be cautious. The two of these breakers are for the larger controller. Okay. This breaker, which it's they've got labels on, um, is for this right here. This is a transfer switch right. that was already in there. Obviously, yes. we just moved it. <clears throat> um, underneath here are some fuses, and then we wrapped them in this just, just to protect. Since it's, you know, since these are positive loads, we got them wrapped in this non-conductive material, just so because you've got negative right here and then positive right here. Okay. So if for some reason you got something metallic and you drop dropped it, right it there, in here, yeah, that would be exciting. Right. It would so, be quite a yeah spark. Yeah. yeah. So we figure rather than a little fireworks display, turn that up. This is what's called the smart shunt. This is essentially your battery monitor right here. These are the bus bars for the batteries. So the batteries, the positives and negatives, are connecting to here, and then those are going to the main system bus bars. Okay. <clears throat> One of the reasons why that we did this is you can have, say, six batteries all in a row, connect them to each other and use one positive and one negative. Mm -hmm. But when you've got that many batteries, you can run into balancing issues. So they're actually wired in groups of two. Okay. Two batteries, two batteries, two batteries. They go to the bus bars. That way <clears throat> they're discharged and charged a lot more equally sure. than if it was just one just string. On, yeah, one big string. One big string. That's really great, actually. One big string is a lot prettier and easier yeah, to yeah, wire, Yeah, but long-term um, isn't the best with six batteries. Man, that is some serious cable. Four-hour cable. Yeah. Yep. That is What's going one. up onto the roof? Big, those are big, too. Um, no, it's, it's number six. 
So it's not huge because your voltage is substantially yeah, high. Yeah, but it's definitely bigger than what was there originally. Yeah, agreed. agreed. By, by like triple. Yeah, it was 10 gauge and now it's it's 6 gauge. So we, we prefer to err on the side of bigger wires. Oh yeah, no kidding. Just to reduce your voltage drop. Exactly. Reduce that power loss. Right. Okay, this charger. <clears throat> One thing that uh, customers with new systems run into frequently no, well, I shouldn't say frequently, but we've seen it enough. Get a new system, they really love it, they're using it, not paying attention, and they drain the batteries low enough and oh, the system shuts down. Right. The problem is, is that usually doesn't happen during the day. Right. It happens at 2 o'clock in the morning Right. when there's not much you can do about it. Yes. The problem is, is when that happens, this inverter, um, per Battleborn standards and, and per really any manufacturer, this has to shut down at a certain voltage. Okay, so, so if the batteries get to a certain voltage, this has to And how far down will that be? For Battleborn, this is going to be 11.5 volts. Okay, so here's the tricky part. Let's say you're draining them, this shuts off, but you drain it low enough to where the batteries themselves shut off. Mm -hmm. Turning on a generator, plugging in a short power isn't going to help you. Cause right, because they're off. too low. Yeah. Oh, okay. So in the event that happens, which it's good to avoid, but in the event that happens, you can actually just plug in this charger with an extension cord. Okay. And then this will put enough juice to kind of wake things up, charge them up a little bit, and then you could plug in a Oh, so that's power. what that black thing is. is mm -hmm. that's just the cord. It's just the cord. So plug the extension cord to that end. Right. So this is essentially, the goal is that you never have to use this. Is that plugged into something right now? No. No. So it runs to that, there's a breaker. Oh, it runs to the breaker. So here's, yes. here's a breaker. Right here. so, so you would turn that breaker sure turn on, that on it won't and enough. plug this into an extension cord into an outlet. Okay. Because like I was mentioning, if the batteries so are... So you just don't turn, you just don't plug it in. You have to turn the uh, breaker on for the charger and make yep, sure just it's turn going. the breaker on, plug yep. this in, you're good to go. Right. Because if the batteries are low enough to where they have shut themselves down, like I said, plugging in, plugging in a short power is not going to do any right. good. Right. Yeah, well, trying to recover a lithium ion for, from dead is tough. Well... The, the, the like, biggest thing is the the battle, the battle born cuts off before it goes into a place right. where it's going to be never exactly. non recoverable. Exactly. So what capacity will it have cut out at? Let's hundred percent is full. Uh, it, it depends on it depends on the load. I mean, if it's if it's a slow draw, then ideally it's probably going to be ninety ish percent. Um, so you discharged. get discharged. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah, we've never come close in one night. We've never come close to right. that. Right. Right. And again, it's not its not that it happens all the time, but it's happened frequent enough that we've said, uh, we're just going to put these in. Right. Because, we'll, you know, you'll get an email. Otherwise, it's really hard to do. It is. You'll get an email at 2 o'clock in the morning or somebody's trying to call you saying, hey, my batteries are dead. Right. What do I do? So, in general, plugging into shore power, you're not going to have that problem. Uh, generally, when you're out boondocking, assuming that you get some sunshine, eventually it's going to recover. Right. If you've had five days of uh, of clouds, you better be seeing where you're at and see about right. uh, charging it up. Now, how fast will the recovery will the recovery be with the generator now on the uh, on the batteries? So this will charge in 120 amps. So you've got 600 amp hours. So in theory, on paper, if it was at absolute zero, it would charge in five hours. Uh, again, there, there's some other factors okay. into that. Um, but again, that's, that's so what voltage will it show when it's fully charged 14.2 or 13.8? 14.4 is absorption Yep. and it's going to stay there for three hours Okay. and then it'll go to 13.6. Okay. So ideally, um, and you'll be able to see it on the touch screen. If you're plugged into shore power or you've got the generator on personally, I would not turn off the generator on plug shore power until this is in float. Okay. Okay. And you don't have to lift this up to know that on, on the it screen. Says float. It'll tell it'll tell you float. As okay. soon as it goes into float, then you're good. Then you're good. So it charges on shore power also if you're plugged in. Well, it did oh, before. Yeah. 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 That's that's the that's the purpose of this right that transfer switch right there, which was already in okay. already in the rig. Um, the difference is instead of the little charger you had over here. Um, well, what we're looking what what I'm looking to when we had trouble. In the east is because everywhere we were camping mm -hmm. was full of trees. Sure. And so there had to be some kind of a schedule as to you were going to run the ge the generator. Right, right. Um, and I would like to not have to run it more than an hour. Sure. Um, but you're going to tell me I'm going to find that out on my panel. 
Yeah, and it depends on how far the batteries are down. Right. You know, again, if they're down most of the way, yeah, it's going to take more than. Well, I, I don't. I, I, we were I, we were running the generator though, and it really wasn't charging the batteries. Well, which, it it was charging it, but not as well as we thought because it was topping out, showing thirteen eight, and I think that was full. Mm. Uh, because I, you know, if I'm if I'm just doing it before. I'd get up to fourteen two or fourteen four, and right. that would be showing probably the float from the, this is all the Renergy system, right? And now, of course, that's sort of not in, applicable anymore because we're not using any of their systems. Correct. So I just wanted to know what to see on the panel. So you're saying if it's in float, I'm good. Yes. Um, and probably well, I'll be conservative the first few times. Mm -hmm. I, I'm drawing it down, but it's going to tell me where I'm at as far on the panel is how deep I've drawn down, right? Correct. Yeah. So if I'm at 80 80 percent down, uh -huh. I, I I should be figuring at least an hour or two to bring it back some or more. Uh, yeah, yeah. Because again, you've got you've got a pretty sizable battery bank now. Yeah. Instead of just a couple batteries, now you got six. Yeah, and, and yeah. I don't think so. We're not going to draw down anywhere. We don't really have that much power here. Sure. You know what? What what kills it is if you have to run the heater, because the sure. heater is just ridiculous. Yeah. Or one of these fans. I mean, none of these things are low of uh, uh, volt, uh, Water low amp amperage. I mean, they draw a lot of amps. Right, and even though it's not an insane amount, it's because it's constant. So it's, yes. a, it's a constant draw. Um, well, I, I, he has a CPAP, but he does. He, we put it on a. On well, a it's got a, it's, it. It is its own battery. battery. I actually have a hundred so watts. So that we don't. So that we're not. I have a hundred watt anything. foldable panel that I'll actually use for, to charge that up. So that gives me an extra hundred watts of capacity of not being drawn on anything from the coach. Right. And honestly, running a CPAP on this system would not be a problem at all. No, I didn't, I didn't think no. it would be. No. At no. all, really. No, it wouldn't be. No, I think where people get themselves into trouble is, <clears throat> so going into the evening, obviously when the sun is going down, you're not harvesting much. Mm. They're not paying attention to where the batteries are at. So if, if the batteries are, you know, at 50% or, you know, uh, maybe a little bit above that, they're like, oh, yeah, we're good. But through well, the night... the they, old system would automatically cut at 50. Okay. Um, and which was really a pain in the ass. Sure. Uh, but uh, there's nothing I could do. The inverter was set up that way. I, I asked to, uh, Integra to change it, and they said, well, you can't. It's, it's, it's hardwired that way. Mm -hmm. The only way it changes is if you put a new one in. And they right. quote, gave me a quote for it and went, well, I don't think I'm going to do that because <laughs> I'm going to replace it all. Right. Uh, right. But it was really a pain because you could go with, a, even with lithium, you can go down to 50%. You basically had one battery. For all intents and purposes, running your coach, even though you had two, mm -hmm. and uh, there's just no way around it. So I could reasonably, from a full charge, go two days without having to go into the red zone. So that gives me a lot of excess capacity with this. You should be able to, especially where before you're using two batteries and now you got six. Yeah, and that that was you know I, I started with two just to see where we were at, sure. and then I was going to put two more in, but everything I've looked at just told me six hundred amps was really the really where we had to be. Sure, and I figured it was going to be hard enough to get it in here that mm -hmm. doing it later would be a real problem. So let me ask you this: Can we run the microwave without turning on the generator? Absolutely, we can. Yeah. That's so all she cares can, about. She can, wants to be able to make, make coffee. coffee without turning on. The you can now. One thing to consider is one one thing at a time because we're still thirty amps. Yeah, one thing at a time. That's, that's a very good point. The other thing to consider is the morning time. Usually, when you're using the microwave or making coffee, you're already low. Is when the batteries are the weakest. Right. Mm -hmm. So you, you kind of have you need to have an idea of where those are at. So in terms of the system capability, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. That part's not an issue. You just have to be cognizant of okay, where are we at in terms of state of charge of the batteries? Right. Okay, and Jenny, we're on the screen. Yep. Let's go to menu. Okay, you're gonna see where it says multi plus. So golf multi plus. Golf. Multi. No, above this one. Right yep. Yeah. Okay. I'm Here's doing this current. without glasses. No, so. you're fine. You're fine. <laughs> okay, you see where it says switch. So it's okay, got... switch on, and then you just touch that, and so, it switch off. So you touch that. It's going to give you some options. Charger only, inverter only. I, 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 Don't leave it. Don't I, touch I, it. I wouldn't recommend it. It's either on or off. Just, okay. just on or off. Those have some other functions that are useful, but if you don't understand what they do, people call in a panic. 
So just just on and off. <laughs> the, and that's the top one. Yep. The on and off. So. So you could turn it off at night so that you're not off. drawing down. Yep. So did you hear? Did you hear that click? Yeah. yeah. Shut off. Okay. So that shut the inverter off. Now it's back on. There you go. Bingo. Okay. Voilà. So you're not having to tear anything apart or anything like that. You can just do it right from the screen. So, like you mentioned, if you've got just, you've had a, you know, real okay. cloudy now, day Now, menu, two, how do I get back to go to pages? pages. Hit the pages. pages. And it takes you right back to that one. Okay. Wow. Okay. So you don't have to. Mm -hmm. So if you've got a real cloudy day or a cloudy couple days and you're like, eh, don't really want to run the generator, want to conserve, then it might not be a bad idea to shut off the inverter. Okay. And that would save, save some power through the night. So. Yeah, but then you wouldn't be able to run your heater. <laughs> the heater should be if it's if the heat source is propane, the fan is actually DC. Oh, okay. So you wouldn't have to have the inverter on to run it. The 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 fan itself mm. the floor would still run. Um, so the the fridge would then would then propane. run off gas. Would run off propane. Yeah. yeah, we usually run it off propane sure. rather than electric. If we're not so we have a, a DC to DC charger on the engine. Mm -hmm. And so we went a little bit of a different route um, just to give you more charging current. Yep. Um, so the one that the, the one that Caden designed for you, it's a great unit. Um, nothing wrong with it. But on a motor home, it, it it's very limited on how much it can put out. So we went with a, a little bit different one. Okay. So you can have a higher amount of effort. Cool. So if you've got the keys, we can actually turn it on. And, and actually that one we did feeds either way. So your alternator charging can feed the coach. Yep. But it, your front battery, your same kept yep. dying. Mm -hmm. You can feed that to charge it. Yep. So now that's the amperage you're pulling in. And now that's the next. So when it, that goes negative, that's showing how much you're actually putting from the alternator to your batteries. Okay. Plus your 130 amps. So you got your solar and that charging right now. Nice. So you're charging via both sources. So technically, you could even turn on the generator and be charging from three different sources. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Oh. Yeah. <clears throat> so, for all intents and purposes, bringing it down below 80% is just an idea that you wouldn't want to go where. I mean, you shouldn't have to. Yeah, I. I I'm a little more of a cautious person, so um, yeah, I, I think having some some headroom is always a wise thing. So is it down 27%? Well, it's right now it's 28. Down. It's a 28%. So you see how the blue down... So it's down, down almost 70%. 72, mm -hmm. yeah. Oh. yeah. Yeah. Now that doesn't harm the system. That doesn't harm the batteries. All right. Um, I get it. <clears throat> but it, it'll chime it has an alarm too so if it goes too low it'll start dinging at you and it'll come across the screen saying you're low right? okay just to keep you aware as well right. so it's not like you have to get you'll hear it start dinging and then well, we've, we've had that happen before but that yeah. was a regularity with the old system uh, so is there an app that I can put this on the phone or no um Yes. Um, there is. So you can access the servo via Bluetooth. Uh, to be honest, this is a whole lot quicker. Yeah. There's another app called Victron BRM. So as long as this system is hooked to some internet source Wi-Fi hotspot, right. then there's a ton of, of, of data available that's really helpful. But in terms of real time, this is that's the fastest. Sure. So, um, you can view like the smart shunt, the charge controllers individually. Um, if you wanted to view the uh, inverter, uh, we could put on a little uh, dongle. But honestly, a lot of that information and capabilities are within the It's right there. Yeah. I don't need the redundancy. Yep. Yep. I just, I, it was, it was, I should introduce yourself. I'm surprised I'm even on video. I don't like being on video. <laughs> <laughs> so Matt with Continuous Resources, I'm the owner here. That's Jace, uh, one of our installers. Uh, a few more people in the shop and others that work remotely uh, across the country. So it's hard to find because it's hard to find. There isn't actually a road sign uh, <laughs> at all. So if you're going to come here, which I highly recommend, uh, it's right. The road you turn left on if you're coming from the north is where the church is. 
and that'll get you here. And then when you get down here, you'll see uh, eventually a, a, a tan building that doesn't have their signage either because nobody wants to put a sign up out for them out here. <laughs> but eventually, I'm thinking someday maybe they'll just get uh, creative with the markers and off you go. But I, um, I thought you did it remarkably fast. Yeah, I really is... thought that you'd have it longer, so mm -mm. it's only been a couple of weeks the most. Yeah, no, we actually, I mean, well, we pretty well had it done. In we had it week. done like Thursday. Yeah. So it's not a continuous, uh, it's not a continuous charge off of the alternator. It's going to be on, off, on, off, right. so we don't overload the alternator. Right. Right. And, uh, but we're already up to 29%, which uh, we're almost at 70 uh, down, but that's, you know, for, for what, what was it this morning when you turned it, when you opened uh, it up? 21 when I came in this morning. It has been cloudy until now. Yeah. And it, yeah. yeah so for you've... probably about the past hour. We've actually right. Had so that's pretty good. I mean, that's not bad at all. Right. Then you got to figure you're going to be driving this home. You're so actually. Let's... Okay. So the process is the same. Just touch the screen anywhere. Go to menu. Okay. So mm -hmm. the first one is depending on what you're plugged into. Okay. And oh, that was a smart shot. Uh, where is the multi plus? Here we go. Okay. So let's say if you're plugged into a 15 amp circuit. Mm -hmm. Okay. We got to set at 15. Let's say you're at a 30. Oh, I could pick, take it to 30. Yep. Which is what our home is at, by the way. Okay. So, so we've got a 30. Yet. Oh, got it. So I'll, I'll hit that. It's going to take a second to update. And now we've told the system, hey, you've got 30 amps to play with. Cool. But if you're plugged into a 15, you'd want to turn that down to 15. I got it. But it's going to, we don't have to change it now. If it's at 30, no, we can No, leave. but if we were like, it's when we were uh, in Rhode Island, uh, my sisters, for an example. Um, it would have been better if I just kept it at 50, 15 amps. Although she said she had a 30 amp, but who knows. Gotcha. Okay, second thing is <clears throat> connecting it to a Wi-Fi source. You can go to settings. Yeah. And you just scroll down here to Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi networks. And when you've got actual available access points, you'll, you'll tap on the one that you want. Mm -hmm. um, it'll have you enter in the password, hit the check mark. There you go, it's connected. Nice. So... Um, what a, not likely to do that's that. That's the password. Well, what the password is for that particular uh, Oh, Wi-Fi. Wi -Fi. Yes, oh. yes. Um, one, there's two two main benefits of doing that. One is... This garbage? Yeah. One is all the data collection. Okay. The second thing is, is if you have questions or concerns or issues, we can log into it remotely and be able to help diagnose. We can wow. do firmware updates, but it has to be connected to... Wi-Fi. That's that's the only way we can get it. So. So if I, I'm at home, I could hook it into our Wi-Fi at home, or Correct. if I've got a, a router on here, I could hook it into that as well, which I will have. Yep. Yep. And that has proven very useful, especially when you when you just have it and you got questions and things like that. Us being able to see the data makes a big difference. So which one is that the most desirable to get connected? Okay. So let's we'll go all the way back here. Okay. So touch the screen, we go to menu, I'm gonna go down to settings, scroll down to Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi networks, and then pick the network. You ah, can okay, to. those are just Wi-Fi networks that are right. out here. Yeah. Cool, I got it. All right, that's good. Oh, great. And then Pages Oz just brings you back to the main menu, huh? Correct, yep. There you have it. Fantastic. Is there any written stuff on this or is it all online i would recommend online just things to a laptop and this side connects to the inverter oh okay okay again very rare circumstance you're actually going to need it they don't need it okay i'm gonna put it because you know, again drawer it, it, of absolute essentials <laughs> in most circumstances as long as you're connected to wi-fi again we can get okay. it remotely not a problem okay um but yeah handy to have but it. keep it We've had the system for just about a month now, and uh, we haven't had it plugged in once, and it just keeps up <laughs> at 100%, uh, just like clockwork. It's, it's really quite nice. We've had, you know, a few little glitches. We had to add additional 
uh, fuse into the panels. Uh, we blew a fuse and we had to add some more fuses to it. Uh, we put a, a microwave easy start on the air conditioner, which uh, <laughs> is really quite nice in that when I'm running down the road now, I can run the air conditioner without having to run the generator. And because the amount of uh, power that's being output by the AC DC, uh, DC to DC uh, charger is equal to whatever I'm using, or more, actually more than what I'm using with the air conditioner. So that was a, a happy thing to find out about. Um, I really do recommend that you, you think about doing this if you're uh, going to be doing uh, any amount of traveling in the uh, in the Integra Vision system or the uh, Elante, any any uh, gas coach, I, I would imagine would do very well by having 600 amps of uh, lithium solar and doing many of these upgrades that we did. You'll find that it was well worth the uh, the, the money and uh, and the time spent. So anyway, thanks. It's a it's a long video, but. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it, and uh, we'll see you on down the road.